I came up with the design of this hat on a whim because I wanted a hat that was great for market prep. It can be done in any yarn, but I love how quick it works up when using bulky or super bulky weight yarns. It requires just over 100 yards and can easily be made in an hour or less. Be sure to check out my written pattern for other sizing options. Stay tuned! For a full list of supplies, see the description box below. This hat can be made using any yarn, but I like to use bulkier weight yarn. So this is a super bulky weight here, and I used Hometown USA. I had to use a little over one skein because the yardage is not quite enough, but I didn't have to use much more of the second skein. And this is a super bulky weight, so I did use an N 9mm hook for this particular hat. This one is actually the slouchy version of this hat, and um, it is a little bit longer, and I used this Charisma by Loops and Thread at Michael's, and it's a size 5 chunky weight yarn, and I did use an L 11 millimeter hook for this. It has 109 yards, which is just enough for one hat, so you can just get one skein, and you can get a whole hat out of just this one skein. So this is what I'm going to be using today, as well as an L 11 millimeter hook. And for the brim, like you see here, I'm going to use a K 6.5 millimeter hook. To begin, you need to chain in multiples of 2 until it measures approximately 7 inches. So for me, that was 18. And as you can see, it measures about seven inches here, give or take. And then you're gonna add one chain. That's your turning chain. So turn and make one half double crochet in the second chain from your hook. And in each stitch across. So again, that's just one half double crochet in each stitch across. So here I have row one completed. This is what it should look like. And we're going to be working in the rows. So I'm going to chain one for my turning chain. And here's where you would normally place your hook for your stitches. This is considered the back loop only. This is considered the front loop only. And if you turn your work, you will see this third loop here. It's the horizontal loop. So you're not going to be working like you normally would underneath those stitches. We are going to be working into this third loop here. It's the horizontal line and it's parallel really with the other loops. It's just on the underside of it. And it's going to make a really nice ribbing. So go ahead and half double crochet in the third loop only of each stitch across. So if you turn it over, this is what it should look like. So you've got a nice little braid looking appearance or a ribbed appearance because doing the third loop pushes those other loops forward and it is really nice. So go ahead and put one half double in each third loop. I'm going to show you this last one because it can be kind of tricky. So again this is the back loop, the front loop, and the third loop is directly behind it. So that's where we're going to stick the last half double crochet. So now we're going to chain one and turn. And by the way, this ribbed side is the front side of your work. So this is the front side of the hat. So now we're going to put half doubles in each stitch across, but we are going to put them in both loops for the first one and then in the back loop only for the second one. So this will create like a sort of subtle ribbing. So I'm going through the normal place underneath both loops and then I'm going to put it in the back loop only. So I'm alternating. I, when I'm trucking along, I usually just do both back, both back in my mind. So go through both loops, like I'm doing here, and then through the back loop only, 
all in half doubles all the way across. So you can see it creates just a subtle rippling. So here I have row three done. And you can see here, it just creates like just a subtle, a nice little texture. And we are going to chain two for this next row. This is the turning chain. It will not count as a stitch. So we're going to turn our work and we are going to work through both loops all the way across. We're going to do a double crochet in the first stitch. And then in the next stitch, we are going to do a loose slip stitch. And the reason I say loose is because we're going to work back into it. So do a double crochet and then a slip stitch. A double crochet and a slip stitch. You're just going to keep repeating this alternating pattern all the way across. And if you look at the front, it gives just a nice, subtle sort of bobble. It's not a yarn eater like bobbles, but it creates the same texture, like a raised texture like a bobble. And it's really nice. So just continue making a double crochet and a slip stitch all the way across, making sure your slip stitch is loose like this one, because as you can see, I can easily put my hook back through those stitches and you want to be able to because we're going to be working back into those slip stitches on the next row. So just keep doing that all the way to the end. So here I'm finished. So I'm going to chain one to turn. And this is how your piece should look. Now we are going to make one half double crochet through the back loop only of each stitch across. So start with that slip stitch there. And make one half double through the back loop only in each stitch across. Make sure you don't go into that chain two. This will be the last stitch here, not that chain two. So now we are going to begin repeating rows. So here we are going to do another half double crochet through the third loop only row. That's the back loop, that's the front loop, and then here's the horizontal loop. That is the loop we are going to be working all of our stitches in for this particular row. So place one half double crochet in the third loop only in each stitch across. So here we are at the end. We're going to chain one to turn and we are going to repeat row three three. And again, that is where we alternate where we put our half doubles. We're going to put them in both loops and then in the back loop only. So this is our next repeating row. Place a half double crochet in the first stitch as you usually would, and then in the back loop only of the next stitch. So again, that's a half double through both loops then a half double through the back loop. This is just an alternating stitch pattern that creates a subtle ribbing. It is really nice. So just repeat that all the way across. So here we are at the next repeating row. That's the subtle bobble row. So we're going to chain two. And again, that does not count as a stitch. Turn and put one double crochet in the first stitch going through both loops. And in the next stitch, a slip stitch. Make sure you're doing it loosely. So we're alternating double crochet and in the next stitch, a slip stitch. 
a double crochet, and a slip stitch. Just going to keep repeating these alternating stitches all the way across this row. So here you will see we have two segments of repeating rows and you are just going to continue these repeating rows. There's four of them. So the next row you will make half double crochet through the back loop only. And then in the next row, you're going to do half double crochets through the third loop only. And then in the next row, you're going to do the alternating stitches of half doubles through both loops, then through the back loops. And then the next row will be, of course, the subtle bobble row. So you're just gonna keep repeating these four alternating rows until your piece measures about 21 inches, give or take. Okay, so if your head is bigger, like say 24 inches, then you may actually want to do it at about 22 to 22 and a half inches. There will be about an inch and a half give once you finish your piece. So if you have a slightly larger head, then you're going to want to make it slightly bigger. And also you're going to want to measure the piece slightly stretched. So I usually just put it around my head as I go. I have a very small head. So my piece is actually um, less than 21 inches. So just do what you think is the average head size if you're selling these. And when you're done, make sure that you end on a subtle bobble row. So when you are finished getting it the length you want, make sure you end on that row. So here I've got my piece completely done. It's about 21 inches, give or take. It is slightly stretched. And again, I ended on the subtle bobble row where I did the double crochet and the slip stitch. That is very important if you want this piece, if you want your hat rather to look uniform. So go ahead and cut a pretty long tail because we're gonna use it to sew up the side seam and cinch the top. I don't like weaving in tails, so I make it really long so that I don't have to get another tail to work with. So go ahead and fasten off. And grab a yarn needle. We are going to do whip stitches up the side seam. So put the wrong sides together to where the right side is facing outward. We are going to go through both loops of row one that we started with. And we are going to go through just the back loop only of the subtle bobble row. So line up your stitches and using that tail, we are going to whip stitch by going through both loops of row one and the back loop only of the last row we made. If you do it this way, your hat is going to look virtually seamless. So go through both loops of row one and the back loop only of the last row that we did. I'm gonna show you a few more times. So just keep doing that all the way across, lining up your stitches. And when you get to the top, I will show you a trick. So here I am at the top. I'm going to take my beginning tail and my ending tail here that I used to whip stitch the side and I'm going to tie it off. And now I'm just going to take the same tail to cinch the top closed. So here's the top of the hat. So I'm going to use the same tail to cinch the hat shut. And I wanted to show you, I don't go through hardly any of the, the side here. I use 
just very little. I grab very little. And the reason that I do that is so that the hat will cinch completely shut. So the more that you hook on when you are weaving your needle in and out, the thicker it will be when you cinch it and it won't want to close. So here I am showing you that I am just grabbing just very little of these loops whenever I am cinching and that will help make it a much tighter close. And let me just say here that if this is difficult for you, if you can't get your hat to close, then you may want to do the top part here like I'm going to show you how to do your brim. And that means a round of single crochet at the top. And that just may be easier for you than doing it this way. However, uh, this is the way I prefer to do it because to me it's, it's just as easy. But you do what you need to do in order to get this hat to close. So here I am at the end. I'm kind of just manipulating the fabric so that it'll close. And you can see I've got it completely closed here. And so I'm also going to take that beginning tail and knot it again. And that just secures it further. And it can be hidden inside the hat. So I'm going to take my tails and put them through the center hole there. That's really small. And I'm not going to hide these tails because I plan to add a pom-pom. And so I'm going to use those tails to sew the button on that I use for the pom-poms to hold them on. So I, uh, as you can see, I'm sort of lazy. I don't like more tails to weave in. So I use the same tails over and over so that I have fewer tails to deal with. So now we are going to add the brim. If you'll notice here, um, this brim has a reverse single crochet, often called a crab stitch. So that's what I'm going to do. Look here and you will see there are some larger holes at the bottom. I'm going to snag like a loop from the braid and that large hole. And this is going to close that hole so that it's not as noticeable. It's hard for me to explain this, so I wanted to include it in my video. And then I'm going to evenly space single crochet across. And if you remember, I said that each segment is made of four rows. In each segment, I do five single crochet. So here you will see I have five, and it's from braid to braid. So here is five from here to here. And I have found that this is the best way. So here's the next four row repeat, and I'm grabbing those two loops there to pull them together and shut that hole. And again, I'm doing five single crochet across each four row repeat. So just continue doing that all the way around five single crochet per four row repeat. Here I am at the end and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet that I made. And now I'm going to chain one and do one single crochet through the back loop only in each stitch around. And the reason that I do the back loop only is so that the brim is more distinct. If you don't do it through the back loop only, that's up to you. But I like the brim to be somewhat distinct from the rest of the hat. So just keep repeating one single crochet through the back loop only until you get to the end. So here I am at the end. Now if you wanted to do another round, in just single crochet that's regular single crochet just go in the continuous round don't join but for this hat i'm going to do the crab stitch or reverse single crochet because i really like how it turned out so i am going to go ahead and slip stitch and i'm going to do an invisible join 
it just makes it look nicer. So I'm still going to chain one and I'm going to do one reverse single crochet in each stitch around. Now this tends to make me crochet a little bit more loosely. So if you feel like it looks like it's rolling up, I would go down a hook size. I usually do. I just didn't in this particular video. But with the crab stitch or with reverse single crochet, it does tend to look like it's rolling up. So you may need to go down a hook size to like a J six millimeter hook. So just keep doing that all the way around until you reach the end. So here I am at the end. I'm also going to do another invisible join. It's a little tougher with this particular stitch. So I'm just going to bring it to the back and fasten off. And now I'm going to hide that tail. And as you can see, that back seam is nearly impossible to differentiate. Now I'm going to add the pom-pom. So as you can see, this wooden button, I'm going to sew using the tails that I left myself inside the hat. I got these buttons from angieandbrit.com. I highly recommend it. It gives the care instructions so that I don't have to put them um, anywhere with the hat, which is really nice. So I'm just going to sew this button and secure it so that my pom-pom that has an elastic band can just go right on top of it. So I knotted it here several times and then I sort of kind of take it to the other side underneath and knot it again. And that just further secures it and it also gives me the ability to kind of cut it to the quick rather than have to weave in those ends. I'm going to show you, I showed this in my last video and so many people liked it, I'm gonna show it again. So this is just a small amount of ribbon. I'm cutting about an inch and a half to two inches off. And I'm going to glue it around the elastic on my pom-pom. And the reason that I'm going to do it is so that my customer or whoever gets this hat will be able to easily remove the pom-pom. So I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue on the inside of this ribbon, and I'm going to put the pieces together. And here you can see that there's just a little bit of a tag, and I'm going to go underneath and snag that elastic and that tag to the underside of the hat. And now it will be easy for my customer to take the pom-pom off whenever they go to wash it. And it is done. Your snow bank beanie is complete. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.